one yeah. of the things that I feel sad about is the fact that I feel like uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency have become something of a partisan issue when it really should be a nonpartisan issue around business technology, around financial technology. FedNow is a great example. Uh, FedNow and other, these, these other real-time growth settlement systems around the world are terrific. They do an amazing job of settling relatively straightforward payments. If I want to pay you something or send you some money, that's great. Blockchains are actually not ideal for that. What blockchains are really great for are complex transactions with multiple parties where I'm exchanging, you know, what I is money for stuff under an agreement with like a smart contract. That is something that these systems can't do and which enterprises are really struggling with because today all the things that they do, the stuff that they make and move is in one set of computing systems and all the money they move and all their business agreements are in two other sets. On a blockchain, I can bring those all together and I can run them so much more efficiently, something like 99% faster at half the cost. But this is still one of the big problems of the entire space is that people don't understand uh, exactly what you're talking about. The blockchain environment is a completely separate environment where businesses uh, can use the technology in a very regulated environment and it has nothing to do with that uh, Wild West uh, libertarian freedom of activity, freedom of movement philosophy that led to Bitcoin and who, that actually generates and fires that Bitcoin environment and the token environment. These are two separate universes and a lot of people don't see that. Well, you know, how, how are we supposed to approach this as either an investment or a, or a facilitation mechanism? So for me at least, and I, I think that's the perfect question, for me at least, I do think about them as separate things. So to me, Bitcoin is a speculative financial asset. It's a little bit like gold. If you have Bitcoin or if you have gold, it doesn't necessarily do a lot, but you have it there as a part of your portfolio, perhaps as a, if you believe it's a hedge against inflation. I personally don't. On the other hand, Ethereum is a transaction processing system. It's generating somewhere in the range of $1.5 to $2 billion every quarter of just transaction processing revenue. And so I can do something like, a, in my mind, I can do a discounted cash flow valuation on Ethereum. I can think about business applications that I can deploy to Ethereum. So that's how I separate the two in my mind. And for me personally, at least, I really think that the future, the value proposition is all around the operational things I can do rather than the speculative investments that I can make.